All right, so it's finally time for the long-awaited 10 million view special q and I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited too. All right, so let's get into the questions. What 3x3 core did you use for the 22x22 and what screws? So uh, this is probably not super surprising to most people. I did not use 4x3 uh, core and screws. You can see here's the core. Here's a 3x3. The core is much bigger than a 3x3. Uh, as for the screws, I used these, these like M4 screws. They're actually really short now that I look at it. So, yeah. Sanding a piece and your knuckles brush against the sandpaper. This has happened to me a lot. It happens. It also happens a lot to me when I'm like grating cheese. Like I'm really aggressive on the cheese grating and I've like grated my knuckles a few times. So, yeah. Why do you always wear a hoodie with your fingers pushed through the cut holes in the sleeves? Is it so cold in your room? So the reason for that is, like, I'm just, I get really cold, even at, like, normal room temperature. It's, uh, I don't know, like, especially with my hands, because normally you guys see me when I'm solving stuff in the videos. And at normal room temperature, if I'm not wearing a sweater, my hands are absolutely ice cold. So I have to, like, turn the temperature up and then put a hoodie on in order to, like, combat that so my hands are warm enough to have the dexterity to speed solve uh, and that's actually a really big problem for me at competitions my hands just get really cold because generally public places are a little uh, colder than I normally have my room so yeah which do you prefer modifying puzzles or designing and 3d printing puzzles this is a tough one like uh, at this point I say I'm pretty sick of the whole designing and 3d printing puzzles thing like it's easy to make designs on the computer but 3D printing using, you know, the rep wraps and stuff is, is fun. It was fun for a little while, but it's just, it's, it's so tedious that uh, at this point I'm kind of sick of 3D printed puzzles. Uh, and any plans for a giveaway? Uh, no, I'm too lazy for that. But yeah, and by the way, uh, this person asked like 50 questions. And uh, thanks for typing out 50 questions. Um, I got a lot more questions than I thought, so I'm not going to be able to answer pretty much all of them. So just answer the first two and I might not be answering every question uh, I got a few repeats from the last Q&A and uh, there's just also just so many questions that I'm probably not gonna be able to get to them all what got you into cubing and slash modding uh, pretty much the most you know standard thing like I had a had a Rubik's cube went on the internet learned how to solve it uh, one thing leads to another you know for modding I think I just saw people doing it on the YouTubes, and I was like, oh, that's cool, I'll do that too. Are you going to let me and Javin be guest stars? Absolutely. That's that's a great idea. Uh, it would be really cool to have Javin, because um, what this guy's referring to, like, Javin and, and him are not cubers, and uh, it would always be cool, like, I've had this idea where I want to teach someone, because teaching someone how to solve a 3x3 three three is too easy to do in like one day, it wouldn't make much of a video, but trying to teach someone blind solving that's a non-cuber in one day, uh, I think that'd be a pretty cool video if if they successfully did it, which I think you could, if like you sat someone down for eight hours, someone who knew exactly how to do blind solving and just tried to explain it, tried to like, tr you know, get them to understand, I think someone could learn how to blind solve in one day, so that'd be a cool video to do with you guys. Would you rather go to nationals or worlds if money was not an issue or whatever else might be preventing either? Uh, by nationals, I assume you're meaning U.S. nationals, and I'd have to probably go with U.S. nationals just because, like, I hate traveling, so U.S. nationals would be a shorter plane ride because I hate going on planes. So, yeah, probably U.S. nationals. When people meet you, do they only talk about the 22 by 22? I barely meet people, so... Uh, they don't really ask about that too much. If you had only one puzzle already made or not, like a fused Yodaminx or 29 by 29, what would it be? You can get any, you cannot have any other puzzles. So I actually thought about this one for quite a while. And you know, there's a lot of cool puzzles out there, but I think the whole uh, made or not thing. So I would go for a. A big shot puzzle if you guys don't know what that is uh, you can look it up but uh, not not in the dodecahedron form either in like the 120 sided uh, figure 
you know, like a big dice kind of thing. And what is the best mod for beginners? I'd probably go with a five by five barrel cube because it's really easy and you get a pretty cool result. So yeah, five by five barrel cube. What is your top three favorite and least favorite WCA events? So for favorites, I'd probably have to go with Mega Minx 3x3 and 7x7. I really like those events. Uh, for least favorite, I'd probably have to go with uh, 2x2 and then 4 and 5 blind, just because I really suck at 4 and 5 blind. And yeah. Why hasn't there been a 12x12 made yet? I think that it would be easier to make than a 22 by 22, but there it just isn't one commercially available for some reason. Uh, funny thing is, this was posted about a week ago, and just the other day I saw that Very Puzzle is going to be making a 12 by 12. They already have a prototype, so it's going to be commercially available very soon. What are some cool looking and turning mods, cuboids, shape mods, etc.? that are fairly easy to make, only simple materials like milliput and a saw and paint and sandpaper. Uh, you know, the barrel cubes are pretty fun to make. Uh, really simple mod would be like the corner turning puzzles that I did. Like I did like a five by five corner turner. Those are pretty fun. So, or at least they, you know, they're kind of a cool little novelty. So maybe something like that. Barrel cube though, it's always fun. What competitions did you go to lately and which ones do you plan on going to? So recently I've been to Too Much Cubing 2017. That was a pretty good one. Uh, I don't have any definite plans to go to any competitions in the future. Uh, might be going to Canadian Open, which will be in Calgary, but definitely any competition I'm going to is either going to be in Calgary or Edmonton. Everywhere else is too far away. Would it be possible to make a double layer turning Mega Minx that turns on all layers. Um, I'd assume it's probably possible. I've seen a video on YouTube a long time ago, or I saw, whatever, um, that has, like, it did do that, where it was, it was the double turn on all layers, but I don't know if it did this, the normal turn, though. So I'm not sure if it was a double turn, if it was just, uh, just the one inner layer turn but that puzzle had like a crazy amount of internal pieces too so it was i think maybe adding the extra functionality of making it also turn like a normal mega minx would probably push that one over the edge so i don't know if it's possible when did you start cubing i think i started cubing in 2009 what is your three by three record time it's probably i think it's like 7.03 are you going to try to break the 7x7 NR? You still have more than a year. Uh, I actually had way less than a year um, because uh, Emily Wong just completely shattered the 7x7 and 6x6 NRs. So, uh, yeah, no chance now. Can I see the Comprominx? Here it is. Would a 23 by 23 be easier or harder than a 22? Um, if that would be to solve, then I'd say it'd be a little easier to solve 23 because you wouldn't need to know the PLL parity algorithm. So it's one less algorithm you need to know. Hey, Corin. So you know how you made a 1 by 2 by 5, and it's also possible to print a 1 by 2 by 3, but I was wondering if it is possible to print a 1 by 2 by 7. Also, is it possible to make an even layer puzzle like a 1 by 2 by 4? So, um, it's definitely e possible to make a 1 by 2 by 7. Oscar von Deventer made a 1 by 2 by 13, so it's definitely possible up to until uh, 13 layers, at least, probably more. Uh, and as for a 1x2x4, that would be pretty easy because you would just have a 1x2x2 and then you would just add little little hooks, you know, add little two pieces on, on the top and bottom and there you go. Why did you choose modding over things like sticker modding? Uh, I think sticker modding would... I, I could never get into that. Like, my least favorite step in the modding process is definitely stickering because by that point like i'm sick of uh making that puzzle i just want it to be over with and stickering is always just like such a tedious and uh 
I never really do a good job. So stick remodding definitely not up my alley. So yeah. Yeah. What method do you use for 4x4? I use Hoya. Will you do bigger puzzle than 22x22? 22 22, than the 22x22? 22 22? Uh, no. Absolutely not. Um, I'm definitely done. There's never going to be any other bigger puzzles from me. Uh, unless, you know, 10 years from now, 3D printing becomes super easy, then maybe, you know, might print out uh, a bigger one really cheap and easily just kind of for the hell of it. But, uh, no, I have no intent of making a, a bigger puzzle. And there are a couple people, there is a couple projects I've seen which are attempting bigger puzzles. Like I saw someone's making a 25 by 25 they had a video of the core. Uh, so, you know, that'll be pretty cool when that's made, if that works in the end. So who knows when that'll be out or if it works. Uh, and all of so I believe someone's making, or at least is planning to make a 33 by 33 so if that works that'll be insane that'll be like uh almost or over double the amount of pieces as the 22 by 22 so that would be a completely insane puzzle uh, and obviously if if that becomes the record like i'm <laughs> i don't think i could possibly build anything bigger than 33 by 33 i don't have the skills the 6 by 8 by 10 have you solved it i was trying and I uh, you know I had one of those things like what happens on a 5x5 five five sometimes where like the layers get aligned misaligned stuff and then had pieces pop internally so I pretty much just gave up and assembled it in a solved position so yeah and I'm not gonna try to solve it again it's there's no way it's too difficult all right, so that is it for the Q&A. Uh, I didn't quite get to every single question, but uh, you know, I don't want this video to be too, too long. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, that's about it. Just thank you for watching, I guess.